Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for coming along uh, today. I'm really keen on these sorts of developments because uh, although I've borrowed uh, Rachel's iPad, I have my own iPhone uh, in my pocket. And on this, I have a series of field guides, both uh, for use in the UK and for South Africa and for North America. And I found myself on a recent trip to North America for the first time ever not taking a very heavy pile of books that the BBC would complain about when it came to paying the excess baggage. Um, because I had all of that information stored on 128 gigs of my phone. So these things have very rapidly become uh, an essential part of our lives. We don't only use them to communicate any longer, we use them for all sorts of other things. I've got a camera on here, of course, which most of them come equipped with. And the cameras are increasingly good. And very often people tweet me pictures of blurred things a very long way away and ask me what they are. And um, I do my best to imagine an answer for that. So others use the camera far more creatively and, and, and sometimes, uh, and, and that can be really good as well. So this has become a very multifunctional tool. It's a fact of life. And for us old people, I count myself as old, I'm 53, um, it's something that we've grown, um, grown into. But of course, for all the young people here, it's something they're going to grow up with. So we're going to see radical changes in the way that we, uh, that we do things in our lives. And one of those things is utilise the countryside. So I, I think it's important that we up update our thinking. So the app has been put together very kindly by the people here today. Um, of course, we've talked about noting that the birds that we might see this afternoon or when you download that app and use it on any of the other trails in this region. But for me, it's about a, a mode of engagement. The fact is you do download the trails and rather like the old um, Ordnance Survey map, that piece of paper that would blow about in the wind and get soaking wet and you could never fold up. Uh, these trails are clear and easy to see and you can open up your pad or your smartphone and you'll be able to follow them. So they're making things easy and we live in an age where people want things easy. You know, if you wait more than two seconds for an email to open, you're grumpy because your broadband speed isn't fast enough. I live in the dark ages of the new forest where we've just got out of black and white TV and it takes me five minutes to open an email. This evening, at the, well, sometime tonight or early tomorrow morning, I'll get to my girlfriend's and all open really fast and I'll be very happy. So instantaneous is good, access is good. And when it comes to this, it's really important that we have as wide a public access as possible. This is not a private place. This is yours, whether you're a member of the RSPB or not. Uh, you can sign up and come in and use it. It's being managed very well, it's being protected pretty well um, for your benefit and for the benefit of all of these young people here. But it will only continue to be uh, uh, protected and managed in that way if you support it. And frankly, you know, I wouldn't support it unless I could use it. I'm not particularly interested in grouse moors other than shutting those that, that do driven, uh, driven grouse shooting down because I can't get onto that land. It's not mine. I have no sense of reward from it. I'll make therefore no investment in it. But this app will encourage you to invest in this by exploring it. And there's nothing better. Look at it. Look at this as a backdrop. Now you can go home at this point in time, if you like, and give up on today's walk. And you can turn on your 84 inch LED 4D television, but you will not get a view like that. And you won't feel the wind in your face. And when you see a bird this afternoon, it may only be a common species. It may not be as sexy as the one you saw on TV last night, but it will be real. And if you're very close to it, you might be able to smell it. And if it's dead, you might be able to pick it up and pull it apart. <laughs> And it's that contact with nature which is really, really important, particularly for these young people. You've got to, you know, you've got to get slimed, you've got to get scratched, you've got to get stung by it to really develop an affinity for it. And this is their tool. They're not going to carry bulky, heavy books around that their grandfather gave them. You know, those are going to be destined for some dusty library which they might keep out of some sort of sentimental value. There's no time for sentimentality. Our world is under a huge amount of threat. And as a consequence of that, we use these in another way. I've just been sat in a lay-by up the road, tweeting. And people have tweeted me this morning because they're trying to cut a piece of woods down in, uh, in Surrey. We now use this as a very valuable tool to, to, to communicate amongst one another and also to lobby for, for the things that we want. So yes, it's a very exciting day. It's the first time I've turned up on a reserve to help launch a new piece of technology. 
and I think that that's uh, a really exciting thing. More exciting perhaps, just about, is the fact that we're going to be going on a walk on one of the finest reserves in, in this part of the country. Not just here, but stretching all the way down this valley. Now I've got to confess, and I'm going to um, be unpopular uh, for this, that my introduction to the region was at the Wild Fowl and Wetland Trust. Um, in fact, just across the road, it didn't exist when I was a kid, but just across the road is one of the first places I met birds. And I'd been into snakes and bugs and I'd been torturing lizards in jam jars and making the tails fall off as slow worms and all sorts of insidious crimes. And then I went there one Sunday afternoon, I must have been about four or five, to feed the ducks. And there was a mandarin, a drake mandarin. Now, um, drake mandarins are basically overdone. They've overcooked the design features and the colour. And they're, they're gaudy, really chavvy birds. But at the age of four, I just sort of thought, what a thing, what a, and um, how can anything this bright, this colourful, this remarkable be genuinely alive? It was like something off of Star Trek, you know? And it was there that I really fell in love with birds. Then they built uh, the WWT place at Arundel and I was a, a frequent visitor. And in more recent years, I've been able to explore this end of the uh, Arun Valley uh, as well. But these wetlands stretch all the way down here. And between here and there are, are a great wealth of, of uh, wildlife sites, as outlined on the trails in here, I've absolutely no doubt. So do your best to access these. The one last thing I'll say is that we do have a selfish and intrinsic uh, uh, pl you know, uh, plan behind that, and that is that when you notify the species you see here, as Rachel said, they will be, or you can, upload them to a record centre. You know, that information will be gathered and will be of some value. Now, if we all spot a blue tit this afternoon, I can imagine that might be too valuable, but in, in, when more and more things are loaded on here, then it will be a, a, a value to us, because your records will count, and they will be genuinely used. And as the RSPB know, as many of you, I hope, took part in the uh, Big Garden Bird Watch in uh, January, Sheer bulk of numbers, best part of half a million people doing one bird watch on uh, one of two days, contribute significant data to our scientific understanding of species distribution and populations. So it's worth doing. So well, look, but by my reckoning, we're all out here on a nice sunny day. We're going to see some birds. We're in embracing new technology. Um, we're going to access the countryside using this. It's going to fit perfectly into the hands of the young people. Us oldies can fumble around tapping buttons in, the, in, in, the, in, in our blithering fashion. Um, and and, and it's, it's, it's a great step forward. That makes it a win-win-win-win-win-win-win-win situation. <laughs> and Southampton are playing Liverpool tomorrow afternoon, so we're not even missing the football. <laughs> And the poodles are happy because they're in the car asleep. It's totally brilliant. Thank you very much for coming. Let's go on a walk. <laughs>